Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, we're gonna take a look at the Cooler Master 34 inch ultra wide screen. This is 21 by nine aspect ratio, so your average monitor usually stops right here, but this gives you a much, much bigger viewing area so it can immerse you into the game. And the great thing is, if you had three of these combined, you now have this more wraparound effect because of the 1500R curved screen. Another feature I like about this monitor is that it has this ring around the bottom of it to give it more of that gaming appeal. And it has a lot of other features that we're gonna go over on this video. So if you've been thinking about a new monitor, this might be the one for you. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. The first thing I wanna show you guys is how large this 34 inch monitor actually is. So this is a 13 inch Samsung laptop, and you can see it is tiny in comparison. Another demo I wanna show you guys is using a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Again, you can see how large this monitor is and it's gonna be great for doing gaming as well as graphics or anything you need. This Cooler Master monitor is a WUHQHD monitor. It supports resolutions of 3440 by 1440. It's a quantum dot VA panel with a contrast ratio of 3001 to give you those better black levels, especially when playing games in the dark. And if you guys have been following my TV videos, look how good the black levels are on this monitor. You have your gray in the middle, and then you go darker here, and then you have a lighter scale. So a lot of products don't even pick up these different layers of grayscale. Now this monitor does have an HDR rating of 400 nits. And here's some examples of what it looks like. On one side of it, you have the HDR content. And on the other side right here, you have the SDR content. And as you can see, it's very bright and vivid, and it's gonna look really good on your eyes, especially playing high definition HDR content. Now I know this is a gaming monitor, and I'll show you some of that in just a minute, but look how stunning this picture is. You're just looking at this and high definition with HDR and SDR content, all the colors are popping. I don't see much bleeding coming in through the backlights or anything like that. And it did very well when I was testing it out for blooming. I don't see any kind of halos or anything coming around the images or anything that really stands out to me. And I will tell you that this is a VA panel. So generally they do really good with the contrast I just showed you guys and for blooming when it comes to logos or any type of designs that's white that could have a glow around them. So let's take a look at the back of the monitor and all the inputs. Over here we have the Cooler Master logo, has this like arch type of design and there's some ventilation slots here as well. Now on the back of it, this is for wire maintenance. It's just a little plastic piece. And this is what it looks like when everything is connected. On this side of the monitor, there's a little joystick so you can get through all the menus, which I found a little bit confusing at first, but I got it down. On the other side of the monitor, there's a little slot right there so you can put a Kingston lock on it. And there's two USB 3.0 connections right there that you can just plug in a thumb drive or uh, anything that you like. Now take a look at the inputs. The power supply is built right into the monitor so you don't need the external power brick. It has two HDMI 2.1s, has a display port input, and that is version 1.4. You also can connect it with a USB-C from a device like a smartphone. And over here, you have a USB input, and that would go over to your computer to power up the side USB ports. Over here you have a headphone output, and yes, this monitor does have two three watt speakers in it, so it doesn't sound too bad. Now when it comes to the RGB lights on the base, it has a USB input, you just plug this into your computer source. It doesn't have any controls, but it will randomly show RGB lights, which still gives it that cool effect. Another thing about this monitor is that you can adjust it from side to side. You also can pivot it up and down, and the whole display slides up and down. So you have a couple of options whenever you want to set this up on your desk or your gaming rig. Now looking at this monitor from the side, you can see that curve right there. And again, that is a 1500R. The next thing I wanna show you guys is how I tested everything out. And I would tell you that overall, this monitor performs really good considering the price point. Now what I did is I took this laptop, which is powered by the Evo processor. I then paired a Xbox controller to it so I could play my Xbox Pass over here. Right now, I have a 4K uh, signal coming off an of HDMI cable, and I was able to max out at 60 frames per second. The second method I tried was this cable right here. 
This does not come with the monitor, but it is a USB-C to USB-C cable, and it can support up to 40 gigabits per second. And with this cable, I was able to get 4K at 144 hertz. The only downside of it is that I couldn't get the HDR to turn on. Now, the third option, which I think may be the best one, and the reason I say that is that when you use this cable, it actually charged my laptop at the same time where this next cable will not. So this cable I bought separately. It is a USB-C to a display port. Now, this is the best connection for performance on the video card. So once I hooked this up and went over to the monitor, I was able to get 4K at 144 hertz, but check this out, the HDR did work. So this cable allowed me to enable the HDR. So if you're looking to buy a monitor like this, just keep in mind that the display port is gonna give you the best performance that this monitor can produce. Not only that you can get the 144 hertz, but if you go to the Cooler Master website, you can also download a colored profile for Windows 10, which works on Windows 11 as well. And this is actually calibrated automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. You just download this, make it part of your drivers, and then you're good to go. So what you just heard was a mic really close to the speakers built in, and they're actually pretty crisp and pretty clear. So if you're looking for built-in monitor speakers, I think they'll be fine for that. But if you want you know, more robust sound, you probably want to hook up a set of headphones or some external speakers. Now what you're seeing here is the Xbox, and I will tell you, I did test the resolution out, and I was able to get 4K at 60 frames per second, and if I dropped down to 1440, I was able to get 120 frames per second. But keep in mind that this widescreen monitor is not designed to work with these gaming consoles that give you the full resolution. In fact, most gaming consoles are designed for televisions with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But if you look here, it actually you know, stretches the picture a little bit, but I think that's something I can live with. And here it is connected to a PS5, and you can see that it's gonna get similar results. It is stretching out the screen, but for a lot of people, it is usable if you needed a monitor for a PlayStation or an Xbox. And don't worry, if you wanna play a PlayStation or Xbox and you don't like that stretched look, you can go over here on the menu where it says manual image adjust, and then you can go down and you can fill aspect ratio and you can see the little black bars on the side. So now it's back into 16 by nine aspect mode. The last thing I wanna show you guys is just a menu system. We're not gonna go through all the settings, but you have your different inputs, you can also adjust your audio right here as far as the built-in speakers. It did switch over to picture mode, but that's based off of what input that you're using. You have color adjustments. Over here, you can have your manual aspect ratio, which I just showed you guys. And this is your setup menu, including all your languages. You have adaptive sync, overdrive, frame rate, so you can see how many frames you're doing just by turning that on. It shows a number in the corner. And you can see there's a few other settings in here like your power indicator, auto off, standby, sleep timer, and some other settings down here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video so far, but there's a few things I wanna say about the monitor. First of all, I'm gonna be using this on my editing computer to try it out with my iMac Pro. And I think with all this extra real estate, I'm excited to get it moved into place and try it out. But if you're a gamer, there's some things that you definitely need to know. First of all, this monitor supports FreeSync 2, which FreeSync Premium seems to be the own, the newest, the greatest, as well as it does not support your uh, G-Sync. So if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can still use it, but you're not gonna be able to get the syncing, you know, processing out of the monitor. Another thing I wish it had was a KVM switch. So if you have two computers, you can use one keyboard, one mouse, and switch between it. So that's something they didn't put in here, but I will tell you that it has plenty of inputs to meet most people's requirements. The third thing I wanna tell you guys is that the sweet spot for the resolution on this monitor is with 60 hertz, and that's gonna give you up to 10-bit uh, graphics. So if you go to 120 hertz, you lose a little bit. If you go to 144, it will support it, but you will lose a little bit of your, um, the color science on the monitor itself. But again, I'm using laptops on this video, so if you're a gamer, 
If you could, comment below. I would love to know if you hooked this up to a higher end video card, can it support 10 bit at 144 hertz because I don't have a way to test it. But with that being said, the colors are great. The black levels are great. Uh, I really like the inputs. The USB-C is great. I, I've tried that out and now I can hook it up to my Mac without having to use adapters. So that's gonna be cool for what I need it for. I like the RGB lights and overall the design is nice. It's got these nice thin bezels. It's got the cool Ma Cooler Master logo here in the center. It's got that 1500R curve, so it really immersed me when I was just you know, testing offline. But I think if you're looking for a new monitor and you don't wanna spend more than $600, definitely, definitely try this one out. I'm Tech Steve. I wanna give a special thanks to Cooler Master for sending this over for me to check out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Tech Steve.